Hi together and welcome to our life hack series with focus on optimization. In the previous life hacks we showed you the parametrization and the screening mode. Today we will hear something about a database. First of all, what is a database and why do we need it? So a database is simply spoken a table where a certain amount of different designs defined by a set of parameters is stored together with the corresponding results of CFD and CSM simulations for each design. This means that for each design or sample a simulation have to be performed. This is often also called DOE or design of experiments. Why do we need it? During an optimization a lot of designs or better thousands of designs must be considered. This would mean that we would have to perform for every design CFD and possibly also a CSM simulation. Here in this example a genetic algorithm is used for the optimization. When we have 100 generations with 400 individuals for each generation then we need the simulation results of 40,000 samples and this for every design iteration. This is very time consuming in terms of computational time from minutes to hours for each design and so on. It would need months or years for an optimization run. So in order to perform an optimization in a reasonable time we need to do it smarter. After the database generation, we have the results of each sample, the blue dots. We can use now, for example, an artificial neural network or a radial basis function network or other methods to create a surrogate model. Then we can use this model to predict the CFD and CSM results of all future designs, the red dots. Of course, we have to use the same set of parameters when we do this. You will get more information about the optimization process and the surrogate model in our next life hacks. What do we have to do to create a database? Well, in a previous step we had parameterized our geometry, so we are able to define a design by a few values or parameters. Now we have to release some of the parameters and define the bounds in between these parameters can vary. This is a quite important step, because if we set these bounds too close to each other, it can be that no better or only slightly better designs can be found later in the optimization. If we set the bounds too far away from each other, we will get most likely a lot of designs or samples which make no sense in terms of aerodynamic or structural integrity and so we would waste computational time. Important to know is that during a database generation all the parameter values are combined in an arbitrary way. Further, we must decide which results we want to have in our database. For example, efficiency, total pressure ratio or in case of a ship hull optimization, the resistance. It is also a good idea to check whether a result varies over the iteration steps of the solver. Means the computation have to be converged. If you do not take this into account it is possible that we will fill our database with incorrect values and thereby make it unusable. There are some strategies in our software to check this in an automated way. Finally we set the number of samples we want to get. We recommend three times the number of released parameters. With all that done, we can start the database process. In this example, we have nine free parameters and the database was generated with 30 samples. One important thing is to check the database. One check is, are the parameters are well distributed in our design space? For this we can use scatter plots where the parameter values are shown over the sample number and we can see here a good distribution of all parameter values between the defined bounds which are marked by the green lines. 
a helpful hint at this point. In the first step you can only generate the geometries and meshes for all samples without simulating them. This is a fairly quick process that only takes a few minutes. If everything is ok then, the more complex simulations can be carried out. Here you can see an example of a parameter distribution which is not ok, because there is some clustering of parameter values and empty spaces where we have no sample. It is quite difficult to judge about the parameter distribution if you have a bigger number of free parameters. In the set of post-processing tools, there is another option that allows you to check the quality of your database. It is called Leave One Out method or LOO. Here all the information from the database except for one sample is used to build up a surrogate model. Then the prediction for the accepted sample is computed and the result is plotted over the accurate value from CFD or CSM. This is replied for every sample in the database and gives you finally a global correlation coefficient. For a good database, all global correlations coefficients for all objectives or constraints you want to use in the optimization process should be higher than 0.65. If all the checks are done, you can go on with the optimization. That's all for the moment. I hope you enjoyed this life hack. In case if you have any questions or comments, please leave us a message below this video. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.